1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest corruption countries. scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. By the Malaysian Insight, this is the Najib Razak 1MDB trial, and I'm Patrick Teo. A former 1MDB director agreed that the company board and Najib Razak may have been conned into entering an investment agreement with Petro Saudi International Limited. Ismi Ismail, the 13th prosecution witness in Najib's 1MDB trial, also agreed with a defence lawyer that the former Prime Minister would not have participated in the detailed crafting that was needed to deceive the board. It's Wednesday, March 23rd, and Najib's 1MDB trial resumed at the Kuala Lumpur High Court this morning. Najib is standing trial for graft involving 2.28 billion ringgit in 1MDB funds. He faces 25 charges, 4 for abuse of power and 21 for money laundering, for offences committed between 2011 and 2013. Ismi was back on the stand again today. Today, Najib's lead defence lawyer, Shafi Abdullah, questioned Ismi about the investment agreement between 1MDB and Petro Saudi International Limited, or PSI. Shafi contended that the 1MDB management had crafted the investment proposal in a detailed manner with an intention to deceive Najib and the board. In his wildest imagination, would Najib be involved in directing on how to con 1MDB? Shafi asked. Ismi said, no. I don't think any prime minister would have time for that, Ismi replied. Shafi was referring to the deal where 1MDB agreed to convert a 40% stake in the 1MDB Petro Saudi Limited joint venture into Murabaha notes. The deal saw 1MDB agreeing to sell off the 40% of the JV shares of 1.2 billion US dollars of Murabaha notes. With the conversion to the Murabaha notes, the joint venture company would, on paper, owe 1.2 billion US dollars to 1MDB, effectively giving 1MDB, on paper, a profit of 200 million US dollars after accounting for the initial 1 billion US dollars. This was all only on paper. No money was actually paid to 1MDB. Shafi claimed that the management did a magic show with the proposal as 1MDB will never get the 1.2 billion US dollars in cash but in papers as Murabaha notes. Shafi then suggested that for such a detailed crafting, a few individuals would have to be involved. Ismi said that he wouldn't be able to say so specifically, but can only assume in this case. Shafi suggested that it would require a very convincing paperwork to mislead the board. Without any hesitation, Ismi responded, yes. During Shafi's questioning, Najib, seated in the witness dock, could be seen fiddling with his mobile phone. Shafi claimed the management came up with the paperwork to change of equity in the joint venture company to Murabaha Notes as they panicked after coming into problems with auditor Ernst & Youngs over the investment of one billion US dollars. The auditor had refused to sign off 1MDB's audit report. Ernst & Young was eventually terminated before the 2010 audit was completed. Ismi said he was aware of Ernst & Young's removal. 1MDB had paid 1 billion US dollars in two tranches of 700 million US dollars and 300 million US dollars to the JV company and Goodstar Limited respectively. Goodstar Limited is owned by fugitive Low Tech Joe, better known as Joe Low. Did the board ever consult Najib, who was also chairman of 1MDB's board of advisors, over the matter of the Murabaha notes? Shafi asked the witness. 
The board were represented by Sharul Haumi, who went to meet Najib, Ismi said. If the management could mislead professionals like Ernst and Young, could they also easily mislead Najib? The lawyer prodded. Throughout the trial, the defence has pinned the fault on former 1MDB CEO Sharul as being complicit with Joe Lowe in deceiving Najib and the board. Shafi called Sharul a culprit for working hand-in-hand -hand with Joe Lowe and said that he was taking orders from the latter. Shafi also suggested that Ismi wouldn't know the briefing Najib had received then and that he wouldn't be able to tell if the briefing differed from the briefing given to the board. Ismi agreed to both suggestions. Before the trial ended for the day, Justice Colin Lawrence Sakera asked Shafi how long they planned to keep Ismi on the witness stand. Shafi informed the court that he still could take another two more days to complete the questioning. Shafi's response drew a response from lead public prosecutor Gopal Sri Ram, who raised his concern over the pace of the proceeding as he claimed the defence are circling around the same material with their line of questioning. Justice Sakera said although he has no intention to curtail Shafi, there are surely ways to shorten the exercise. Instead of reading each document, just summarise it, Sakera told Shafi. And with that, the proceeding ended for the day. The trial will continue tomorrow. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by the Malaysian Insight. It was written by Ravin Palanisami and I'm Patrick Teo.